Everyone knows Batman, and most people know the films he's been in. But how many truly have examined the posters he's been part of? That's what I'm here for today. To help guide you through the history of Batman movie posters, see which ones worked, and which could have used another pass, maybe a Snyder cut for the poster. We're gonna go ahead and start with the original Michael Keaton film. Sorry, Adam West fans, we're, we're not going that route. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I put out one of these poster videos every week now, and I have a ton of other content on the channel movie related. So think about it, I implore you. All right, let's get into it. Simple, elegant, iconic. These are words I use to describe myself, but can also be applied to this poster. Batman is a symbol after all, so what way to better showcase that than to put his logo right out there for people to see? Tim Burton's Batman operates outside of the law, so not even the poster can contain his glory, his splendor. It, that, that logo blows out the side of the frame because it's large, it's impactful, it's powerful. It's Batman, baby. This logo is shiny, it's new, it's polished much like this Cape Crusader on the screen. It's the first time we're seeing him, he's fresh on the scene, and you better believe he's out for business. He's out for justice. I love this poster. The simplicity of it is great, the painted style to it, the reversed font treatment, it's all working for me. It, it's, it's just a strong poster, and it's one that instantly is recognizable to people. Let's move on to Batman Returns. If it ain't broke, right? I actually love this one more. The, the way the, the snow element is drowning out the logo, it's, it's saying, we're gonna tarnish your legacy, we're gonna wash it away. And that really comes through at the bottom of the frame where you see the snow covering over, it almost looks like it's blowing parts of the logo off. Usually I'm not keen on serif fonts, but they work here. It's elegant, it's simple. You have the bat, the cat, the penguin, just enough to let audiences know what type of villains they're gonna see in this without having to shove them all over the poster. And then at the bottom, a small yet equally elegant Batman Returns. Beautiful, gorgeous poster, I love it. I, I, I would proudly display that if I had a room of my own in my house. But I'm married, so. Dead inside. Let's continue. There was one other prominent Batman Returns poster that did feature the other characters, all nicely lined up in some sort of a Batman totem pole. It works though, because there's so much negative space on the sides that's kind of engulfing most of the poster, your eyes really focus on these three. The lighting's pretty interesting in this too. They're really giving the center stage to the villains, Catwoman and Penguin, they're very bright and punchy. They're almost illuminating the scene below them with the penguins marching and even the logo itself. It all feels connected, whereas Batman is kind of fading out in his own movie. And, and that's the whole point of the, the plot, that's the story, is to make Batman the villain, make him irrelevant now. And at the end of the day, I think that's the job of the poster, is to not only win you over, to interest you, but to also let you know what you're in for. Let's head on over to Batman Forever. And so it begins, the downfall of posters. Now we are at the point where a logo isn't enough. We have big names associated with Batman. This is a huge franchise at this point. It's selling out tickets all over the place. We gotta put the big name actors on the poster. Jim Carrey, Nicole Kidman, Tommy Lee Jones, Chris O'Donnell. Guess Chris O'Donnell? And of course our lead Batman, Val Kilmer. And Michael Keaton's not back. Okay, well, I like Val Kilmer. He's fine, just not my Batman. As much as it pains me to not see that beautiful logo in all its glory for a third time around, I'm almost happy it's different. Because it tells the audience those past two movies are a separate thing, even though we're, I guess, continuing this franchise as if it were operating as a third film, it's very different all around. Way more color has been infused into this thing, we got bigger actors showing up, and so yeah, we're gonna change the poster, we're gonna let you know that. It's honestly not that bad, all things considered, about where I where we're at today with movie posters. They position Batman in such a way that he's really encapsulating these characters inside so you're focused on what's going on in the middle there. They're sandwiched in by the Batmobile on the other side. So you have yourself a cavalcade of actors just at this diagonal line across the middle of the poster. It adds a little bit of depth to it, a little bit of interest than just having them straight on. And it's I've seen much worse, but this is a big step down. Batman and Robin, the punchline that keeps on giving. But I have a knock-knock joke for you. Knock-knock, who's there? I don't know. I don't know who. 
I don't know who the fuck thought it was a good idea to put nipples on Batman. You should never work in Hollywood again. This is the Heroes poster. There's also a Villains one, but I really want to focus on this. And really pay attention to the nipples that take center stage here. Not so much Batmans and Robins at this point, but Batgirls. Alicia, poor Alicia Silverstone. Had a hard time fitting into that costume to begin with. And, and then they, they have to go ahead and have the audacity to light those puppies up. Look at this. Let's enhance if we could. The artist puts some sort of a brownish bloom lighting behind Batman's arm and really focuses on the nipples on display here. Beautiful job. What a, what a piece of artwork we have here. We've come a long way from just a simple logo, haven't we? I don't know who taught Chris O'Donnell how to run. I presume they never had arms in their life because what is going on with his? His fist is so unnaturally posed in a way that no one runs like this. Is he throwing a punch? He's crouched down almost like he's taking a shit. <coughs> oh, holy turds in a toilet bowl, Batman. I hit him. I think Batman's running, but I don't know where his other leg is. I assume it's going behind him like this, you know, like he's doing a forward momentum while also flailing his cape flamboyantly. But it's so drowned out in this... The, the blur, the motion blur in the shadows, it's hard to know what's happening. Also, George Clooney. I mean, come on. This was such a poor role for him to have. He, he's so off from Batman, it's ridiculous. Yes, he's very wealthy, he's rich. That's about the only thing he has in common with the character. Even in his facial expression here, he just looks like he has zero shits to give. He's just like, <laughs> I'm Batman, I'm Clooney. The other Batman and Robin poster is pretty standard stuff. You have the entire crew of main characters on display with, with an X pattern. Uh, kind of breaking everyone apart. You got our heroes on the left and right. And then for some reason, Batgirls joined up with Poison Ivy down below. Mr. Freeze taking up the prominent position in the, in the top center. I love Arnold, but... They need to chill out with this placement. This doesn't make any sense. It's not the worst poster, all things considered. I'd get rid of the names that are just floating above the characters. I think that's ugly and messy. Get it more simplified. I mean, people know who these actors are, you know? At this point in time, people actually knew who actors were, unlike today's generation where you know TikTok people and YouTubers and you don't really know who George Clooney is. It's fine, I'm not, I don't, it's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying, when this movie came out, people recognized all of these actors. So yeah, this is a colorful nightmare, just like the film. It reflects it very well. It's a mess, just like the film reflects that very well. But uh, all things considered, it's not that terrible. Batman Begins has a series of posters that are all very similar. The, the colors are the same across the board. They all play off of silhouettes. And they all really go full in on the whole bat motif. There's bats everywhere in this thing. You could spend a day counting up the amount of bats on display between these posters. I like the concept behind them. The execution's very well done. You know, the man transforming into the thing he fears. These bats, you know, flying down from the sky towards the camera. Just the kind of brooding look of all of them. However, the color, the browns, not my favorite. They're not something I think I would like displaying in my house. Once again, I, I don't have a room to myself. I'm a sad shell of a man I once was, but still, I, I, I'm just not huge on these posters. I, I like that there's a theme to them, and again, it does match the color of the film, which kind of does have this gross brownish to it. I never really cared for Batman Begins from a visual standpoint, especially coming from Christopher Nolan, who I know is more than capable of making beautiful films. Now we're talking. I love these posters for The Dark Knight. Again, The Dark Knight is such a good movie. It's, it's nice that the posters do reflect that. The burning bat symbol, holy crap, the symbolism there is palpable. And it bounces so well, it punches off the muted blues very nicely. The tagline above it, Unnecessary, I would get rid of it. It doesn't add anything. It just kind of takes away from some of that empty space I would have liked there. We don't need to cram stuff into that area. We can keep that, we can keep that clean. A and the logo at the bottom with the blue rays shooting out, too much. I don't like that, it's distracting. Keep it focused on Batman and that symbol, that beautiful symbol above him. Very nice poster. One of my favorite posters in all of the Batman movies has to be that Joker profile one where he's blurred out in the background and the why he's so serious is written in blood. It's a much darker poster than we've ever seen from these films. And that's because Heath Ledger's character is far darker than anything we'd seen before. The, how the smile plays out is really interesting with that blood splatter. 
Uh, they got the logo right at the bottom this time. That bat icon isn't blasting off with rays of sunshine. It's very muted here. There's a nice skyline behind the Joker. It's a bit layered, adds some depth to the poster without going wild with it. You're really focused on just that simple sentence. That really cool font treatment and that sick smile across Joker's face. There are a ton of Dark Knight posters though, and I think they all work pretty well. I don't have a problem with really any of them. So this was a great series and a great film. The Dark Knight Rises series is probably the least creative of the Christopher Nolan posters. My favorite of the bunch is definitely the bad symbol made out of the buildings using the dead space. And I love the message behind it. The decrepit buildings falling apart, the darkness down below can only be saved by the sky above, the opening in the city tops that feature the Batman logo. It's awesome, very well done. Most of the series is really into the snow slash rain effects beating down every which way on the characters. They're all kind of stoically standing there. There's a lot of character posters for this one. Uh, just one person with the, the rise messaging above. They all do the trick. Um, they're, they're pretty, they're nice, they're lovely looking. A lack of color in all of them. Nothing amazing by any means. Nothing that screams creativity. Well, that's my poster trip down memory lane. Hope you had a good time. Make sure to comment and let me know what you thought about the posters. Like the video if you had some fun. And again, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It, it would make me feel all warm and giddy inside. And then I can see you around the channel in the future. All right, take care. Oh my God, you're still here. Wow, dedication. <laughs> Since you are dedicated, prove it. Join me at Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies and say, Adam, you know what? I love all the content you're doing. You're busting your butt for us. Here's a dollar a month or here's $5 a month. If you don't want to leave, that's understandable. There's, there's stuff to watch. Hit the join button right here and become a member of the YouTube community. You get exclusive access, just like Patreons do, to a show I do once a month called The Cringe. It's a, it's a funny, silly show that's only purpose is to make you laugh. So hopefully you can see that. All right, take care. <laughs>